monster. I'm your number one fan, 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 fan. Now clear your minds. Learn to scans you. It has from the very beginning. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Put the zombies and enter the building. They're at the door. They're coming in. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Midnight Monster Corner Podcast. I'm your host as always, Corey, and alongside me is my good pal, Tony. What's going on, Tony? Much, dude. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long, it's been a long, long, long work week. So it always long. seems to get long, like all, the it, work drag more and more and more. It's, it's only Tuesday, man. And it feels like, honestly... I've been working like crazy. <laughs> well, they worked the shit out of me at work today. So, I mean, I, I'm off on Mondays normally, but just working one day it already feels like I've worked half my week already. Yeah. Just on Sunday. I get mm-hmm. it. I, I feel it. It's terrible. Work, work shouldn't be like that. Work should be easy. Easy money. In theory. <laughs> In theory. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It's like, yeah, it sounds <laughs> really it is a little more. Uh but folks, we are we're doing a, a fun, fun episode tonight from nineteen seventy six and that's the Grizzly or well, Grizzly, it's not the Grizzly, it's just Grizzly. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, Tony, you kinda turned me on to this one a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, um, well, I'm a big fan of this director's work. Um, um, his, his, he's done uh, a, a really underrated 70s flick called The Manitou um, that I just, I love that flick so much. It's so much fun. It's so bizarre and weird. Everything I love in movies, it, it's in it. So, I mean, he, and then he's also done Day of the Animals, which is another film that me and you have seen before. That uh that, that I personally really enjoy. So um, mm-hmm. th- there was a no brainer. It had been a while since I've seen this too because I kind of wanted to revisit it. And then you told me you haven't seen it before, so I was like, oh man, we got to do this. This this is the one. Yeah, this is a great first time watch. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, but uh, so before we get into anything, folks, you are listening to the Midnight Monster while well, you're watching on YouTube the Midnight Monster Corner podcast. <laughs> and um you know be sure to check out all of our other areas where you can you can join the discussion and watch us and listen to us we're on we're on all platforms um and then also on social media mainly our facebook group if you head over there it is a closed group you ask we'll let you in um but it's it's just fun we, we talk about horror films and we we share you know funny memes on horror films and and just you know have great conversations and really start conversations it's fun uh so yeah, make sure you head over there huh right it's a community it absolutely is i have a blast in it um, oh, yeah. talking to, to uh everybody on there just everyone's got a good sense of humor and everyone's got you know especially when we ask for you know really blows me away is when we ask for recommendations and everybody comes with their recommendations i'm like man there's some great recommendations that that people are giving out so i love it man i love seeing that that's awesome yeah yeah and uh you know if you're new to the channel and you're new to the group and everything uh basically what what tony is talking about is our suggestion episode which is the third episode of each month where we ask for a suggestion on the themed month and then we do a drawing uh so head over there and check that out and uh you know, give a suggestion if you if you've never been. It's uh, or never been there. It's it's a fun, like I said, fun community. Um, but if you haven't seen uh, Grizzly, uh, it is on Tubi and it is free. If you don't mind watching ads, it's there, and it's in really good quality. Actually, I watched it on Tubi. Very good quality. Use the uh, the uh, code red scan. Uh, yeah, or, I believe uh, it is. Yeah. Um that print so it is it looks gorgeous man i uh i watched it on the code red blu-ray and it looks absolutely beautiful so 
Yeah, it's he used that print, but um, yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm glad they did. I'm glad it's not muddy quality. Like no, all the- no, it's it's really it's like the it, it is an older film, but you can't like it's not very grainy and so uh, you can definitely tell it's been cleaned up and it, it looks really good. Because I think yeah, I, I have the you know the old edition, the, the Shriek Show edition, and. That one kind of looked a little bit well. You know, Shriek Show's always kind of been hit or miss with their transfers mm-hmm. over the years. So that one, I mean, compared to the Code Red Blu-ray, looks it, it looks really really good. So you can tell that they did, they they put a lot of work and and effort into this release. So yeah. um, it's, it's it's but I'm glad that they used that print instead of the older print for the uh, <laughs> for that one. So yeah, yeah. but yeah. Um... Yeah. So, what's your what's your first initial thoughts? Um, yeah. First of all, your, your first initial thoughts on the intro. Well, the music the music strikes me first of all. I mean, I, and I had a feeling you were going to go there with that. The music to me is is very interesting. It seems like it it fits like a like a seventies kind of adventure film or something like that. It's not. I wouldn't say whimsical, but it's it's kind of like light and upbeat. Mm-hmm. The score, it's pretty interesting. I wouldn't say it's odd, but well, it kind of is odd. But <laughs> but I mean, it, it it's it's interesting. I didn't. It's a, not your typical score for a movie like this. Let's just say that. No, so you know what came to mind when when the score started playing for me, um, and I even think I wrote this down in my notes. But it was essentially like Western meets Little House on the Prairie for me. Something that's, like that. That's the way it felt. Because at, at times, and not only not only did the score make me feel like I was watching kind of a Western, but some of the action sequences in this film made me feel like I was watching a Western a little bit. Yeah. So I, I, was, I was getting the vibe of a Western for some reason. I don't know. I felt like I was watching Western a little bit there. But it's, it still didn't kill it for me because this was a, this was a fun experience. I could see that being a detriment, but you know, like you said, if it doesn't kill anything for you, and you're still along for the ride. That's all. You know, bad. honestly, like, like, yeah, I, you, know, I mean, you can sit there and say that uh, it could have been a detriment to this film. However, it kind of fits the film because you, you, you feel a little outdoorsy and rugged, you know. So it, it, it definitely fits the film. I spend like the majority of the time in the woods too, so it, it's like it plays heavy in the plot, of course. I mean. We have a killer grizzly bear running around tearing up campers. I mean, you're going to spend a lot of time in the woods with said grizzly bear. So, <laughs> I, so mean, it does. I really love the fact that now your take, your take first, first and foremost, let's get this out of the way. Okay. So Jaws came out in 75. This came out in 76. Right after Jaws. Yeah. It came Jeez. right out on the wheels do you do you think they piggybacked off one another as far as like you know was some things taken from jaws in this it's, film it's a straight jaws rip off and i don't think they ever really denied that and i think it's very I, obvious that it is, especially when see, we, I, I, I don't feel that it was very intended i i feel like it was man you have this the yeah. same exact almost characters the same three i mean it's it's basically Jaws on land. I mean, you could you could relate the characters to Jaws with the characters in this movie. Like you have your Quint character. You have. I mean, it's it's to me it's very obvious. I mean, I, I don't think well, especially it came right after Jaws, so you know there had to be some intent there. Okay, so so after hearing hearing what you say, I I can kind of see that. So I mean, okay, so it is intentional. Um, and, yeah. and I think, I think well, the, I say that to your point, Corey. You, you, this is the first time you've seen the movie. Yeah, I've watched this movie a couple times now, so there's little things I, I pick up on it that are like, mm, well, Jaws well, did come out the year before. So yeah, well, don't get me wrong. So I went into this not knowing what date this came out, and thinking this actually came out before Jaws. So I was going with the mindset of, did Jaws rip this off? So I was actually watching it prior, well, you know, like I said, not knowing that it came out in 76. I thought it came out a little bit earlier than, than 75. So 
Uh, that's that's me. Um, but, but one of the things that I kind of noticed at one point was the fact that you saw the little subtle moments when the bear attacks uh, were happening. You weren't actually fully seeing the bear. In Jaws, you don't actually fully see Jaws until the end, you know. And uh, yeah, so I, I kind of noticed that about this film, you know. So I was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> but there again, I, for some reason, I was thinking that this came out before Jaws. Well, that's yeah. cool. That, I didn't know that. I mean, I, I didn't really, we didn't really have that discussion prior to watching yeah. the movie. Either. I, I fully, cool. I fully didn't honestly just pay attention to the, when the movie actually came out. Um, I was just busy watching the movie itself. Absolutely. Another thing about it, I, I just really quick want to point out, like the '70s font in the in the credits, like the opening credits. I love that yellow '70s bold font. I don't know what it is about that. It just, and every time I see it on these new like grindhouse kind of throwback films and stuff like that, they pay like a straight homage to that. Like it, it's it's just so cool. And it, mm-hmm. and it's seeing a movie. It's like okay, this is where I mean, this is where you get it. So I just dig it. Great way to start it off. Yeah. It's a great way with the score being as his little house in the prairie and western as it is, and then you get that font. <laughs> the shots of the wood, the shots in this film are great, man. Of, of the scenery and the of nature and mm-hmm. the, oh my god, the the waterfall scene was just amazing favorite scenes in the movie. I thought that was brilliant the way they did that. Yeah. Um, but you see how fast and, and insanely large this, they don't say if it, they never really say if it's a reservation. You kind of expect it to be a reservation, but they never really say what kind of reservation or... or yeah, it's like it's it's like a campground or something. It, well, it, 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 they do say it's a, it's a national park. It did say that because I missed that part. I didn't yeah. hear that. And there's a, there's even a sign that says there's a nas- it is a national park. But I didn't see if it said national park. I, I just must have missed that. But and that's why that happen. well that's why that guy is not wanting to believe that this is a grizzly bear attacking, because he's like you know he's the owner of the place and he's like oh well no the grizzlies are much further up north on you know up you know. Then um, so we have Christopher George who is our main character. He plays. Um, uh, or, uh, ranger kelly yeah. yeah he's like the head ranger and um he tells the the mayor of our story from jaws <laughs> the uh what's his name kitridge kitridge i believe his name is um mm-hmm. he tells him basically like hey you know when originally so originally what starts off with is these two campers these two uh ladies are attacked and and just completely dismantled by this bear I'm, or this grizzly i'm not even called a bear because they even make a point in the movie to say the grizzlies are different they're much larger they're much meaner they're so i'm not even going to say bear i'm going to say grizzly but yeah. so these two female these two lady campers are just completely torn apart by this grizzly and man the, what surprises me is the gore like you have body parts yeah. flying around it's like, man, I, when I first watched it, it, it really floored me because the way it starts out, you wouldn't expect – you'd expect them to kind of like shy away from those kind of kills and it to be implied more. Kind of like but off no, camera. They kind of show it more, and that, that really surprises me with the tone set in the beginning of mm-hmm. the movie. You don't expect that kind of shift, and I wouldn't call it a shift, but you just don't expect that – to see it like that. You expect it to be more off camera and kind of – shot away from so right away it's like wow i'm surprised by the gore really Mm -hmm. but um yeah well my point i was saying that so basically our you know christopher george our character my uh ranger kelly says that hey we tagged all the bears um when we moved them up i think he said he moved them up he's saying how do you how do you phrase it um he moved them up, up county or something like that, where he, yeah. they, they all the bears. So they had a tracker on all the bears that mm-hmm. they had in their forest, and they moved them. So I guess they, when they start to hibernate and stuff like that, they get closer to the mountains, 
and they're able to, you know, hibernate and stuff like that. So they weren't near the campers per se. Yeah. Well, there, there was further dialogue, um, which this, this is where the story kind of is a little different than Jaws. Um, but the, the storyline, uh, through dialogue, uh, they, they basically said that, um, was I think it was uh, Don Scott and and then our our main character Kelly. They were all talking, and um, you know Scott. This is when Scott presented. This is a grizzly bear, at least fifteen you know foot tall, weighing in about three thousand pounds. And Kelly's like, "There's no way." All the hunters. We made sure that all the hunters killed them off. So, and he was like, "No, this one survived." So. It's almost like a revenge story in a sense, whereas to like Jaws, there's no rhyme or reason really why Jaws is killing. He's just killing because he's a shark. Yeah, you know. But but this this grizzly is like outsmarting humans and stuff like that. He's coming for revenge. Was too, but what I got confused was is they make a point in the movie um, with dialogue from from. Scott, our, our Richard Jenkel, our, our character, Scott, he's like the natu- the naturalist, the nature naturist. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you put um, So he he's well-versed in all forms of um, animal that live in the forest, and he, he's like an animal expert. So he makes a point to say, hey, and I caught this this time with some dialogue he had with Kelly. He said, uh, Basically, we're looking at a grizzly that hasn't been seen for for years. It's it's almost like a prehist like a like it's it, it used to be a extinct species that used to be like eighteen feet. That was on average like eighteen feet tall, mm-hmm. and now we're dealing with one that's fifteen feet tall. So they said, "Oh, I, I remember Kelly saying something like, oh, so it's it's a younger one. It's a more of a baby or something like that." Mm-hmm. But I thought it was fascinating because now I'm thinking, um, did, where where did this this ancient bear come? Or I can't I said it again. Where did this ancient grizzly bear come from? I mean, it's been dormant for all this time, and it just shows up now. I mean, it, it's it's kind of confusing. So when you said the the revenge angle, I got confused there because I thought it was they were taking it more in a not prehistoric, but like a this this bear hasn't been or this grizzly hasn't been seen for centuries mm-hmm. and it's, it's, not, it's it's a it's a rare species it's a rare extinct species that well that they thought was extinct but now obviously it's not yeah it's here so i'm like well where's this bit where's this grizzly been this whole time <laughs> mm-hmm. has he been kind of sasquatch in, in the in the forest just kind of hiding yeah he's, you know? he's just been, he's been you know he's just been chilling it's hard to hide a 15 foot grizzly bear i mean <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying it, it, it's kind of you would think it's tough, but apparently he's he's ninja grizzly, and he's just <laughs> been avoiding spec like speculation for for <laughs> years. But um, no, I just think it, it, it's kind of vague with the the backstory and and how the grizzly came to be and how it started to um, show itself and attack campers now of all like. like at any point, it's now that it's attacking. So something had, yeah. there had to be a catalyst to set off this bear. That I said it again. This grizzly to attack and start maiming and killing because they they mentioned they mentioned before they're like, well, he's got the taste of blood now. He's already killed somebody and had the taste of blood. Now he's now that's all he's gonna go for. He's mm-hmm. not gonna go for like animals, even though he does kill a a, a bear cub. Later on, movie and and well, and he eats a deer. It's a deer, that's true. So and then it goes after a horse. That poor fucking horse. Decapitated a horse. I couldn't believe that. He bitch slapped the horse, and the horse's head blew off. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, "What just happened?" (laughs) I thought about this part. I I couldn't believe it. He literally was just like, and the horse's head just went go. (laughs) fucking flying i was like dude did that just fucking happen <laughs> that's one that's one strong grizzly bear man yeah just slap a, a horse and capitate it <laughs> <laughs> when so the first the first thoughts i had on the grizzly was when 
when the two girls in the beginning got attacked and like I mean you hear the sound of the grizzly walking kind of stalking him a little bit you hear him breathing heavy and he sounds like a grizzly and then or, or just a bear in general I guess you would say uh, from you know when I would think a bear would, would sound like that would sound like a bear to me um but then out of nowhere like you see you see these giant paws come out and like grab these girls and stuff and i was just like am i watching the right movie is this a werewolf movie what is this <laughs> like i that's that's what i got from it at first um even the even the uh the uh, scene where the girl goes to take a shower in the waterfall or whatever and the, the grizzly grabs her from behind and again these giant it's like is this a werewolf movie I'm watching? <laughs> I get it. I get, can we talk about that? Okay. So this girl is is a park ranger. Mm -hmm. She's there with another park ranger. They're they're investigating. They're figuring out what's going on because this is right after these two campers are viciously mauled by this grizzly mm -hmm. bear. So what? So she's like, I wrote it down. She's like, oh. You, because he's like, oh, I'm going to go off ahead and scout up here and stuff like that. And she's like, oh, okay, you go on ahead. I'm going to sit here and soak my feet. And I was like, well, that's interesting. That's an interesting line of dialogue. So then she proceeds to get completely, well, not completely naked, but yeah, she starts stripping off all her clothes and then jumps into water. I'm like, well, that's not soaking your feet. That's, <laughs> that's what diving you? right in. Yeah, there's a grizzly bear out there killing people. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just I love the dialogue because he's like, oh, no way a bear is going to be up in this part of the woods. Guess what? <laughs> it's a movie. There's going to be a bear in that part of the woods. <laughs> it's just so so opportunistic that that would happen. Like she would just think like, oh, the best possible thing for me to do is just completely disrobe and hop into the water while there's a giant grizzly bear out there maiming and killing people. Yeah. Um, the probably the best thing for me to do right now i, I just thought that was hilarious I, mm -hmm. but it leads to like i said i mean you were talking about one of my favorite scenes is that waterfall scene where she's behind the waterfall and then the grizzly comes out and attacks her and stuff and you just see the water flowing and then the water turns blood red mm -hmm. i thought that was really like the way they did that yeah that was pretty cool I laugh that whole setup was just so funny to me it's so so cheesy there, there was some funny moments in this movie quite a few <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, and I, that, to me the strongest thing about this movie is our three lead characters and their banter with each other and their camaraderie with each other mm. um, so uh, Christopher George anytime I see Christopher George in anything I'm psyched because this I, I love Christopher George he El, he brings something special to a movie no matter what movie he's in, it, he just brings that extra, I don't even know what you call it, it's just that extra oomph to his role. And yeah. whether it's a film, film, whether it's, you know, he's he's been in a couple, like, slasher films in the 80s. He's, he's uh, unfortunately passed away in 83. Mm -hmm. um, he could have gone on an even bigger career, I'm sure, in horror, had that not happened, but unfortunately, very tragically, passed away. Um mm -hmm. He could have been he could have been just like John Saxon to me. But um yeah, him him and Richard Jenkel, who plays Arthur Scott, the 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 nature expert, and Andrew Prine, who has to be one of my favorite characters in the movie, his accent and his dialogue is just the best. It every time he would say something or would talk to Scott. And they would kind of go back and forth with each other. I would laugh because he was so funny and so direct with him. And yeah. it was, it, when he confronted him or said, uh, you're the crazy ass one running around in a bear costume up in the woods. <laughs> like you got a death. <laughs> like he was just laying into him. I was just laughing hysterical because he's funny, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian's great. He, he's another guy that he has these roles in these really obscure kind of horror films. And and anytime I see him in something, I think he was in a movie called The Evil I watched not too long ago, which I liked his character. Of course, I liked his character in that. 
Um, he was in a movie called Calendar Girl Murders, which is a really underrated 70s flick. Mm. Um, but he was the lead character in that movie, and he he was phenomenal in it. I loved him in that. But um, these these three actors, man, like if you're going if you're gonna kind of go off of Jaws and the amazing performances that you have from those lead characters in that movie, especially Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw as Quint is one of the best, man. Mm-hmm. He's one. But they really brought a little bit of their own to this in their own, like, three-headed monster almost. Like, they're great together. And I almost, I almost wanted to see more scenes of them all together, like, throughout the whole movie. Just because I love their their dialogue and their banter. So great. Like, you intermit, in, intermittent that with Killer Grizzly Bear and kills and stuff like that. You have a primo movie, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. The banter between them is what made this film go on more. Because honestly, if you didn't have those small comedic like yeah yeah just and they they were they were slid in kind of um almost like just under the radar you know if you if you really weren't paying attention to the movie you didn't catch it you didn't pick up on them but it almost seemed like throughout the film that it kind of made a genius that these these guys were going at it like that and it almost made them kind of uh a packed house you know it, it's like it, it, it's it's what you would want, uh, you know, to, to follow the story with. And, and, you know, like you said, it is right. It's like, um, it's like chief Brody, Quint and, uh, Cooper, you know, from Jaws. Um, yeah, the little, the, if, if the banter wasn't there and the character, these three characters weren't as interesting, I think that this would have been a slow burn film and, and it would have bombed. Absolutely, man. And I think that's when you hit like these three great actors in this ro- in in this movie. You get if it was any other like stock actors, like any anybody else, it's, it wouldn't have worked because these mm-hmm. these guys is awesome. So they they bring a lot more to their character just based on the way they bring they bring their own charisma to these to these roles. I mean. Um, and that's the reason why you have a Christopher George and Andrew Prine and Richard Jenkins like that. They bring that to these characters. And I'm glad that they got these three together in this special moment in this movie. Like how we have this time capsule uh, of this movie that have these three in it. And I'm just glad it worked out that way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because sadly, like, out of all of them, Andrew Prine's the only one that's still alive. Because um, Richard Jenkel died in the, in the late '90s, and of course Christopher George died in '83, so um, it's very, very sad, man. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm missed out on more Christopher George because he's—I always love Christopher George. And everything he's ever in, I'm just—I'm happy he's in it. He brings some oh, and pieces of two, of course. That's, like he's in that's probably well. that's probably one of my favorite roles that I've seen him in. Uh, besides this one, I had a lot of fun watching him in this movie. He's always great, man. He's, mm-hmm. And he brings a lot to his character, too, because my one of my favorite things that they did with him is when this first starts going on, when they first have the attacks, um, he has a moment where he's in his office and he's drinking and he's having like an existential crisis. And he's like saying, what am, what am I going to do? What do I do? Like he's having that moment and he's he's portraying that to you as the viewer like and you're like wow man he's really like showing like a little bit of vulnerability right now Mm -hmm. he's never had something like this so he's kind of like scrambling trying to figure out what i need what's the best case scenario what what's my next plan of action what do i what do i need to accomplish i mean and he and you just get a little bit more like that little touch brings a lot in his character and you it sympathize with him more because mm-hmm. any other any would be like oh i know exactly what i'm he'd be like i don't do this do this no he genuinely didn't know what to do and he opened him he opened it up to the to the audience to be like wow like this guy gen he just doesn't know he doesn't know what he's gonna do he's he's basically going trial by error and and just trying anything that he can like it just 
getting hunt. Well, he didn't get the hunters out there. That was the uh, that was the park own the owner mm-hmm. or character. Yeah, he did all that. That was his doing. Christopher George had wanted nothing to do with that. He's like, I don't want these hunters. First, he told him he's like, call the call the National Guard or something like that. Like, get them out here. We need more help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He uh, he he. Well, that's the thing. So he he didn't know what to do because his hands were tied. You know, here he is. He's a park ranger, and he, you know, you would think that he would have more authority over the owner of this land, essentially. You know, um, but in this case, you know, the owner of the land was basically putting a stop to it, and he was like, you know, essentially, you're not going to shut down my town. You know, type deal. So, that's but, yeah. Familiar. Mm-hmm, very. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but I like what they did with with the uh, that character as well because he so he didn't want to shut this down, nothing like that, and he wanted it to be low key um, until um, then. Next thing you know, he brought the. It, it didn't make a lot of sense to me because he wanted it. To, he kind of be hush hush a little bit. Um, he wanted to take care of it kind of in-house. And the next thing you know, he made it public by getting, you know, all the reporters out there and, you know, everything else. I like the fact that he realized his wrong, of course, obviously, after the fact. Um, but, yeah. You know, because pretty much he, he was like, I mean, he was shutting down. Essentially, he was shutting down, um, you know, Kelly to, to do anything. And so Kelly just sat back and, you know, obviously that's when the little boy got attacked and then the mother got killed, um, you know, sadly. And then uh, uh, the little boy survived. um, But, you know, obviously he's going to go on in life without a mom now. Um, But I just I thought it was kind of, you know, a, a moment where, you know, he was like, I don't care what you do, just get it done, you know, get that get that bear you know, or something. He realized the error of his ways, and he realized that him being great. No, because I think Kelly even said that, "Hey, you, the only reason you're doing this is to get you a cushy little little seat in in Washington, and and be a big shot one day." He's that's basically what you're getting all the press out here for to see you can handle it smoothly. And listen here, this is going to be like this is going to be one of those things where it's like we we have to try every little thing to to put a to put a, the kibosh on here on this but i loved how kelly didn't take shit from him either he was in his face it was great i Sorry. wish i wrote that, but i i wish i would have wrote down his dialogue because he was giving kit shit like he was in his face he was like you can kiss my ass and this isn't i loved it man i'm like hell uh-huh. yeah yeah yeah, it was it was good dialogue there. I always thought it was funny too because I wrote this down and I know I looked up a little bit of trivia on this, but um, so our grizzly bear, they said he could be this, you know, I wouldn't even say extinct. It's not extinct because he said there there was a species of bear that lived a long time ago, a uh, grizzly that lived a long time ago that was that could be eighteen feet tall. And then they said that the grizzly bear in the movie was 15 feet tall. But in all actuality, the the grizzly that was in the movie that played the grizzly was 11 feet tall. Mm. <laughs> so, so it's like, you know, yeah. <laughs> a little more. But so the, the grizzly bear was named Teddy. And the, apparently that's that's the grizzly that they used for not the shots of tax but just the shots of this tax of the grizzly being there and standing up on his hind legs and being really really (laughs) and uh um threatening yeah 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 that's um yeah i i noticed that the shots that they used also were kind of from the ground angle up like when he was standing up to make him look taller and stuff too, you know. Nice. So I did. I did notice that. Yeah. Did you? I mean, we get our killer bear, killer grizzly POV. Love that. Always mm-hmm. dig that. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. 
Do you know what my favorite piece of trivia is on this movie? Mm. So, at the time of its release, this being 1976, this was the highest grossing independent horror film at that time. And the movie that would end up beating it two years later in 1978 would be John Carpenter's Halloween. Mm. Probably my favorite little tidbit of trivia. Well, there's that. <laughs> no, that's just, that's cool, man. It's 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 yeah. interesting. For for years, this movie held that little that little shining moment, and then it was dethroned by the absolute masterpiece that is John Carpenter's Halloween. <laughs> so you know, it, cool. it blows my mind that it's taken this long for me to watch this film. You know, uh, I'm glad I finally watched it because it's um, I like it a lot. You know, even though, but, you know, it is, it does feel like a kind of a Jaws ripoff, or I guess you, you would say it is a Jaws ripoff. Um, and as much of a fan as I am of Jaws, I still enjoyed this. This was fun to watch. You know, it's sad that it's not played, played as much, you know, or it's kind of, it goes kind of unheard of, you know, seeing as how just that little trivia that you just said. You know, it's cool. For two years, it was it was big time. Mm-hmm. Here's a little bit of a trivia. I bet you didn't realize. So you know, I critique the shit out of films when I watch them. I did find a flaw. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the scene where I forget the Forest Ranger's name, but it was the couple. Um, Kelly makes him go into the watchtower and the bear, the bear fucking knocks the watchtower over. Badass too. That's crazy. So, uh, another force ranger walks up. I believe it was that scene. It might've been a different scene, but I believe it was that scene where a forest ranger walks up and checks the guy's pulse while wearing like leather gloves. Yeah, that was Andrew Bryant. Yeah. I noticed that too. (laughs) He yeah. checked his, uh, tried to check his pulse, but he did have gloves on. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, well, you're probably not going to feel anything through that. Yeah, just that take too, take your glove off. He's, he might be still alive. Ew, I don't want the blood on me. <laughs> this dude was covered in blood. <laughs> that oh, dude God. was mangled. Yeah. Oh, man. So the ending of this movie was. Dude. Are we, are we now? Are we there already? I don't know. <laughs> Holy I, shit. I mean, because we talked about the hunters and everything, and how it outsmarted the hunters, and well, yeah, because the the hunters were brought there, and which is a terrible idea. You get these guys, these drunk ass hunters, and a lot of them. And there was even a line of dialogue that said, "Well, this ain't like hunting deer." A lot of these hunters had never hunted bear before, like no. from what I understand from the dialogue. So they're they're out of their element completely. They're a lot of them are drunk. There's still campers there. I mean, it's just a recipe for disaster all around. Like this. Well, like, well, like Kelly said, you just opened the whole park for open season for these guys. They're going to shoot anything that moves, including themselves. So you're just like you're you're. It's like a recipe for disaster. I'm honestly surprised that we didn't see any of that in this movie. Like 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 a scene or two of like the hunters going, oh shit, I think I see something, and shoot, and it's like a person too that that honestly i thought there would be more of that like more collateral damage in this because of mm-hmm. because of that situation that unfolded but no we don't get any of that we get this group of hunters that um which i love that like fake scare with the the bear cub so mm-hmm. they're, they're lying down sleeping and this bear this bear cub roll, rolls up on him and then he's like oh god he gets scared because he thinks it's the grizzly <laughs> no it's they start petting him. And they're like, "Hey, let's use him as bait. If if this is the bear cub, we'll we'll lure out the mom and stuff like that, and then we'll get her, thinking that she's the grizzly." Um, but it it didn't work out too well because the grizzly ended up eating the bear cub, which was crazy. Mm-hmm. And then, they said, then they made a point to say that, "Oh, this grizzly is not a female; it's a male because the males will eat their own." Mm-hmm. So find out that this isn't yeah this is a male grizzly bear so 
Mm-hmm. It's a little line of dialogue, so it was pretty pretty interesting. But um, yeah, I just uh, I don't know, man. I, I that that ending. Well, we could that ending. That ending was fucking insane. Mm-hmm. Right away to end. I, it's one of those things where that ending always elevates this movie because of how they go about destroying the ba- the grizzly. <laughs> yeah. Don't see coming. It's so random. <laughs> well, if you if you follow along with Jaws, you know, I mean, no, I sim- just similar, love how similar it, endings. I just love the way it was done. So nonchalantly, the way it was done, it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feel bad because I remember where I was on the phone with you and talking to you. I was right at the end of it, and I was like, "Oh shit, it's right. This is his first time watching it." And you hadn't made it to that part yet. <laughs> so I felt like a heel saying anything, but <laughs> it it literally, it, you caught me at a, a time where just like, oh my God, I forgot about that. That just <laughs> happened. I cannot believe it. And That's I just, okay. the, uh, the horse bitch slap really paid off for me. Yeah, that was great. And then the girl getting undressed and then <laughs> diving into the the water and then going into the uh, the waterfall and then the 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 fake bear mitts that yeah. shit's hilarious. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute before we get to the ending. Let's sure. talk about that for a minute, okay? So, what what is it with this bear? Like, okay, so when you're getting attacked by a bear, you're thinking, okay, this bear's gonna grab a hold of me. First things first, bears don't have opposable thumbs, so it's gonna be a little bit hard to grab someone like this bear does. Um. Secondly, you know, any of the close-up shots while he's killing his victims, you notice that he's not even using his mouth to, like, mingle these people. He's literally bear-hugging them and squeezing them to shit, like, squeezing them to death, essentially. Uh, did you notice Scratch. that? Like, he was like, yeah, I mean, other than, like, scratching them, you could tell he was just, like, literally squeezing the shit out of these people. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that a couple times, and I was like, like, wouldn't he bite them? Like... Do they not bite their? I don't. I, I don't know. I'm not a bear expert. Get the bear to to do like that. Like I don't know. Maybe they could get him to bite or make a biting like mm-hmm. motion. I don't know. Good way to explain that. But <laughs> you are right though. It's a lot of times the bear. What I think is hilarious is the bear will they'll cut to a and it's the editing. It, it's I get it, but they'll cut to the bear standing on its on its hind legs. And just growling and stuff like that, and then cut to the person getting like thrown around and, and destroyed, but the bear's still like up. <laughs> it's just funny. Makes <laughs> me laugh every time I see it because the bear's not moving or not thrashing or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> the victim's like getting thrown around. It's just it makes me laugh. Beating up. I yeah. love that. I love that. I like the uh, the shot with where where so the bear attacks Scott. Uh, that was, that was a funny moment kind of, because like, like you said, when he was, well, at one point he's like burying Scott and like, as he's burying Scott, like, again, you're seeing this bear just like up on its hind legs, like, Rawr. and the whole time, like you're seeing like dirt being flung onto the sky. You can see it like somebody in the crew just with a bucket of dirt, just, just <laughs> throwing it up. <laughs> But you, I like that scene too because Scott is supposed to be our our animal expert. He knows mm-hmm. about knows about every animal in that forest. He knows exactly what they do, and he makes a point earlier on in the movie of saying that bears or grizzly bears will partially bury um, their victim and stuff like that to come back later and and finish the meal essentially. And then that plays in. They, he does that to. Scott, who said that to everybody at the end, I thought that was pretty like like foreshadowing mm-hmm. almost, like uh, kind of could foresee his own fate, but it happened to him. But you don't expect, I didn't expect his character to die. I really didn't. Like I was mm-hmm. like, man, I was, like I I completely blanked on him dying. I thought he survived, but no, he didn't. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. So you know what I just realized. Like as we're talking about this, so our our Cooper character, 
yeah, with Scott, and... right? So near the end of Jaws, you the the ones left on the boat is uh, Chief Brody and and Quint, right? I yeah. mean that the you know Cooper goes down into the water and then you know he's kind of unseen until the end of the movie. Well, Scott goes off on his own, essentially metaphorically into the water with the beast. Yeah, which I I, I equated equate Scott. Scott's character more to Quint. I don't know why, because I guess he was the, the expert and he was tracking him. And, kind of the hunter. You know, and I always thought that um, Brody, of course, is Kelly. Um, mm-hmm. Of course. So. Um, and, well, and then I thought about it. I was like, no, you can kind of interchange maybe. I don't know. But they're that's, still that's the way I think at, of it. at their core, essentially the same three characters. Yeah. You think of Definitely. What's the, the helicopter? Was it called the Orca? I don't know. I didn't see that, but if it was, that's hilarious. <laughs> that would have been a funny little tidbit. <laughs> no, um, yeah, so sadly, though, sad, sad, because I, I wasn't expecting. And then when he got up, I was like, okay, thank God he's not dead. He made it, you know? No. Hey. <laughs> like, come they, on. They this is a know. 1970s movie. Jeez. What's- with the time, I mean, there's a high body count in this too, man. And there is a surprising thing, and I didn't, I didn't expect that. Essentially, I knew there was a couple kills, but I didn't realize there was as many as there were. And mm. I didn't expect for that kid to get mauled either, which I should have, but I didn't. And when I first saw it, I remembered something about it popping it in this time, but. But, I mean, they do make a point to say that the little boy survived um, yeah. through the dialogue. So, and that's what really was the catalyst to be like, yo, we need to get this under control. Like now now we have kids getting mauled, and that's just not cool. So, we have to get this under control, which that was the catalyst. So. Mm-hmm. He had that, that guilty-ass look on his face, which reminds me, okay, we didn't talk about this scene. The scene where the camper, where there's this guy and his wife, I think it was his wife, his girlfriend or whatever, but she gives him a look and she goes back to the tent. And this guy's got the biggest shit eating, I'm about to get laid grin on his face I've ever seen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You see what I'm talking about? Like, he is like, I'm about to get laid. I am. It, that face was hilarious, dude. <laughs> so. And then the grizzly tears up that tent and gets to that woman and just mauls her, too. It's like crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> if I had to bring that up or with that in my notes, I laughed. I was like, I had to, I had to write that down. Like, this guy's got the shittiest, the, like, the shit-eating grin I've ever seen on, on somebody. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, you want to you wanna get into that ending? Discuss that a little bit? Yeah. So, yeah, so pretty much, uh, uh, so yeah, they found, they found Scott, right? Um, yeah, well, he didn't have to keep in, in contact with them and he, well, well, okay. So yeah, Scott found, Scott found the deer that they, that they had, uh, you know, kind of used as bait, which that, that kind of, that kind of blew me away. Like, like, so that, I don't know, he, it's like he cocked the gun or something. Or did something and made a noise and it spooked the grizzly and the grizzly hauled ass and they chased it. And I think they said that well, we must have chased him for a mile. And he doubled back and like went and got the the fucking bear or the um the deer. You know what I was I was thinking was that they were gonna walk up on their helicopter and their helicopter was gonna be fucking mangled, you know? Kinda like he outsmarted them, but that wasn't the case. This grizzly credit man, he's hella stealthy. Like he is able to get around without people noticing him. Mm-hmm. Really, and it's really convenient. I know, I get it, but he it's moves just very funny. quietly for a three thousand pound animal. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree because he he basically sneaks up on people. Like I, I, you would think you would hear this, but no, these people are completely oblivious. They don't know what the hell's going on. No. They're just in their own little world and, 
they don't hear this 3,000 pound killing machine behind them, sneaking up on them, ready to maul them. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's funny. He's able to ninja his way around that forest like no problem. And he knows how to open gates. He didn't smash through that gate, he knew how to open it. It smashed a watchtower and dismantled a watchtower. Yeah. It's a smart grizzly. Yeah. But, yeah, so, yeah, so, um, so Scott calls Kelly and them and tells them where he is and everything. And they're like, stay put, don't go anywhere. Had he listened to Kelly, he probably would have been alive. But no, he had to go after him, you know. Which, it kind of fits the story in a sense because, you know, now there's an ulterior motive, you know, for Kelly and, um, what's his name, Don? Is that his name? Um, yeah, yeah to, to, to go after the bear at this point. Because uh, Scott was kind of their friend, you know. So, but yeah. Uh, so they're flying around at this point after that. Because they found Scott. They're flying around to try and uh, find the bear. They find the bear. And um, essentially just kind of go after him. Um, what, what were they going to try and do? They were, they were going to land, right? Or they they landed to try and shoot him. I would have tried shooting him from the sky. You know. That's interesting. Uh, or I don't know, like trying to basically trap it. But. Yeah. There's there's really no trapping it because you're you're in you're in his territory. You're in his world. You know. Uh, it's hard to trap this grizzly because he's. I'm sure he knows this for. I mean, I know. Kelly was a forest ranger. He's very familiar with the forest, but you're also on his turf. Like he's obviously proven that he can get around very, very easily, being as big as he is and being very stealthy. So I, I it's hard to trap. I know in your head you're like logically, this is what we need to do. We need to trap the animal and capture the animal. Um, but I guess it's it's easier said than done. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's that's what that's what Scott was wanting to do, right? Scott didn't want to harm it. Scott wanted to. Yeah. He didn't want to. Which is which but is crazy. After, I guess, and then maybe after what happened to Scott, that was a catalyst to be like, "Yeah, we need to take this motherfucker down." <laughs> like, no playing any games. We need to do this. Yeah, I I get that. I mean, you take it personal. It's your friend. You know, and he cared for this animal and he, you know, out of all the people that he wouldn't think would be killed by an animal, that it would be Scott because he did genuinely care and didn't want to see this bear get hurt. Of course, he, there was, um, I didn't mention this, but there was a little bit of a thing with pride. There's a little theme of pride in this. And there's a, a moment when Scott's talking to Kelly in his office and he's like, um, uh, I, I, you know, I can't, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but he's like, uh, you need to set aside your pride essentially to, um, to get the job done because he was sitting there drinking. It's like, you can drink, you can drown your sorrows and everything in the scotch and everything, but you need to put your pride aside and, and we need to handle this and this, this and that. And then, but I thought about it. I was like, well, Scott's kind of a hypocrite because in a way this, the whole reason he wants his grizzly is for his pride. Like, to being an animal expert, he doesn't want to feel like he's failed. He wants mm. to be able to, to capture this grizzly without it getting hurt. That's his pride coming out. So mm -hmm. in a way, he's kind of a hypocrite because, you know, he's just as guilty. Maybe not in the same vein, but he, he is as guilty because he's showing himself as prideful. So I thought that was pretty fascinating, too. A nice little tidbit, a little extra little piece to this puzzle here. Um so I, I I did make a note of that, too, because I did remember that conversation that he had. I, I, I mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something to that effect. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember that. Um, yeah, I, I can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember where he, where he's talking about, you know, drowning your sorrows. And I can kind of see where you're going at with that. Yeah, it's it's kind of hypocritical. Yeah, you, you, you think about it, and I think the whole reason he wants to track this bear and, and capture it, because I'm sure he wants to study it, and, you know, it, it's it's a species that hasn't been seen for, for centuries or whatever, whatever he said. So he was obviously, there was a lot of pride involved with him being 
the expert and the, mm-hmm. the naturalist to to get this done and for him to actually be more of the expert and his, which he did he knew a lot of information about this grizzly um he knew what he say that the the bears have a track that or the grizzlies have a track that they like to stick to and everything he, he was making good points and even foreshadowing his own demise too with these points so yeah, he definitely had a little bit of pride showing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's still it's still sad to see him get killed in the end though. Yeah, you kinda hope for you, these three characters you kinda hope for them to stay alive. And unfortunately that's not the case. You know. Which which leads us to the you know, further into the ending where uh, first things first. So they landed the helicopter and the guns aren't loaded right now. <laughs> Again, another flaw. I would think that the guns would already be loaded and ready to go. Um, but yeah, so they're si- they're sitting in this helicopter, loading these guns, and uh, lo and behold, Bear comes out of nowhere and grabs the helicopter and fucking manhandles it. <laughs> that, I, that caught me off guard so bad. I was like, dude, th- did he just fucking bitch slap this helicopter? <laughs> And again, it, it honestly looked like, again, it looked like a man in a bear suit on this one. I, I strongly <laughs> felt that way. And it happened so fast. I strongly think that, that it was a man in a bear suit, you know, because it happened so quickly, you know. It uh, just, I don't know, something like that, though, adds to the charm. It, it's, it's, it's a different tone. Like, sometimes it's a, it'll be a situation it'll be a situation where they use effects like this and it it looks hokey and bad but it's because the the film is i don't know man sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't in this mm-hmm. film it does because it, it's it's a certain charm and especially in the 70s man there's a lot of this going on in the 70s essentially basically but for me right. it just it adds the charm it it's one of those things where it, it Realistically, it's a nit. It's a nitpick, not not a nitpick, but it's a flaw. But you kind of look past it because of the tone of the movie and and how it's how it's shot and how yeah, how you get like a bear standing on his hind legs growling at somebody, and then like a quick cut to this person getting thrown around a mall, but then cut back to the bear still on his hind legs. And, you know, with his paws up, just growling and stuff. It's just funny. I don't know. Well, you know what? And I mean, you know, maybe maybe because we're a new generation and we're, we're spoiled by, you know, so much more these days that the practical effects really. The, in the time period, if you were watching this in the movie theaters, I'm sure it was fucking scary as shit. Like a giant ass bear fucking people up. Yeah, it probably scared the shit out of people. Yeah. You know, keep your ass out of the for a long period of time just like jaws kind of essentially kept you out of the water if you mm-hmm. really were terrified which many people were but i mean it's basically doing the same thing with the woods and in the forest so i mean yeah not on the same scale as jaws of course but still you can equate the two to that little stigma <laughs> Of, oh, don't go out in the woods. There could be a killer bear out there. Don't go out in the mm-hmm. water. Don't go too deep. There could be a killer great, great white out there. <laughs> you know, chomp mm-hmm. But with this movie, is the less the less is more. Jaws took that approach because, unfortunately, Spielberg and company, there was a lot of not... There was a lot of breakdowns with the practical shark, and it would... It would tear up and stuff like that so they had to essentially use that less is more uh, approach which worked for the movie it made it brilliant so um with this movie there was not too many i mean not noticeable scenes of like a fake grizzly used because they interspliced it with the real grizzly so you see a lot of that it's almost like a less is more approach too it really is, but it, and again, it works because the cuts happen so fast, you know, so it, it does work for this film. Um, even in that shot, like I said, it happens so quickly that, I mean, you know, clearly you can tell this is obviously 
somebody dressed up as a giant bear, uh, but it worked, you know. Right. I, of course, instantly my mind was going, I was thinking more logical because, like, how can this bear be 15 feet tall and not get hit by one of those fucking propellers? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he, but it was like barely spinning. But so spun this thing around, Don goes flying out all to his lonesome. Uh, he, I think he what got two rounds in to the gun before he got spun out of the the helicopter. So yeah, he tried same. he tried firing the two rounds that just pissed off the bear even more. So he went after Don. Of course, Don then turns his gun around like he's gonna fucking just beat the shit out of this bear. And, uh, and then Kelly tries to save the day with his gun doesn't is unsuccessful let's talk about how many rounds they pumped into this bear incredible it, it was a bunch <laughs> did not stop him i love how the bear i love how he basically bear hugged don <laughs> it's just that's what, that's basically what happened i mean it's just you see the blood come out of his mouth like, oh, you know flailing <laughs> around yeah i was kind of hoping that he would have like knocked knocked him down or something it's one of those things where it's like, well, you don't want to see him get killed either, but the way they did it, and it's, I don't know, it's so I mean, hokey. You got blood coming from your mouth. That's a done deal. Well, yeah. you have a 3,000-pound monster, like, crushing you. I mean, it's, with the hug, it's kind of, you know, <laughs> you kind of know, but um, I just thought that was funny. Yeah. He was just a care bear, you know? He just cared. He just wanted to give him a hug. <laughs> he wanted hugs and affection. That's all. That's all he wanted. <laughs> this is, all, the, all the killings were just pure accident. Pure coincidence, yeah. That's all. <laughs> so, lo and behold, uh, Kelly now finds a grenade launcher. Just you say it, it makes me fucking laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I like how he was like trying to figure out how to use this thing. Like he didn't know what the hell he was doing. <laughs> it's not one of those things you shoot on. You got on the weekends and just you fire off a couple of rounds of that thing like this. Yeah. Especially when you're like a poor stranger. Like it's not. I was kind of, I was kind of cringing because he was like slamming it down on the ground. I was like, oh my god, this thing's gonna go off in his face. <laughs> <laughs> Like, how do I work this thing? Slam it down. Dude, don't do that. That's There's an explosive in there. Oh, well, that was easy for me. I could mm-hmm. just mosey up on top. Find me a picnic basket. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, then, and, then, and then a Jaws ending. The bear that, explodes. That, see, that whole ending was just a, so funny, man. I... You just don't. When you first watch the movie, you don't expect it, but then you're like, ah, oh, okay. I, I kind of, yeah, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> <laughs> you would kind of assume it would deviate, but not so much. But that that whole ending, it was great though. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. I was just waiting on him to say, "Smile, motherfucker." <laughs> Or smile, you son of a bitch. Or something like that, right? Somewhere right. along those lines. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a blast with it. I'm glad yeah. you liked it. Yeah, it was a fun one. It's even funner talking about it, too. That's why I like doing these uh, discussions, because it's fun to talk about these films. Especially, I don't know, there's a certain charm in discussing like movies from the 70s and 80s that just brings out so much excitement when you get to sit down and kind of dissect certain scenes and talk about certain characters and certain mm-hmm. themes. It's just like brings a lot more to the table and I love doing it. That's why I love doing this. It's just fun talking yeah. about these movies. You see a, a movie in a different light and maybe you certain, I, I see it in a different light than I did the first time I watched it. So that goes to say anything. Yeah. But these are always fun to do. Definitely. Yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I I love doing these reviews because 
like I said, this is a movie that has been under my radar for a long time, and I've just uh, never sat down to watch it. I and, say you, you, you watched it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You wanna you wanna go into ratings? Yeah. Okay. So what'd you rate this on Letterbox? Uh, I'm rating this movie a. I fluctuated between a three and a half, three and a half star to four. I think I'm gonna give it four because it's it's not quite the level of Jaws, which is a five of the perfect creature feature, the perfect uh, killer animal flick. But mm -hmm. it's damn, it's damn fun. And of course, there's some pacing. There's a little bit of pacing issues and stuff. But you know, I with this watch. I mean, I've had that problem before when I first saw it. I was like, well, this, it, it takes a while to get going, especially in, toward the middle. A lot of movies fall into that though, where the middle of the film there's some pacing issues and stuff like that. But I, I follow these characters. I like listening to these characters' dialogue, so mm -hmm. that kept me going through the movie, and I enjoyed it. And then, like, the the killer, like, their set pieces and, and sequences where the, there's limbs flying and, you know, it's just carnage. And that that's, like, an added bonus, too. And uh, it's just it, pacing didn't. But I, I will say that, it, yeah, it's got a little bit of pacing. There's some editing issues, of course, that you mm -hmm. kind of, oh, well, it's, it's a movie in, of its time. And I mean, you're going to have stuff like that of course happen. So it's not a flawless film by any means, but it's fun. It's just a fun watch. So I think I'm gonna I'm going with a four. Four star. Okay. Um yeah. Um I I like you said I did have a little bit of trouble whether or not to uh honestly I, I didn't even think about doing a three and a half. It was either a three or a four for me. Um but ultimately, you know, I love the banter between the three main characters. Um, uh, the the ending to me is is dark and bleak, um, and I, I I liked it. You know, even though it it it's sad because all his friends died. You know, in the end, you know, it's just Kelly left alive. Um, you know, but you know. He, he initially did what he set out to do, take care of the park. And that's that's initially, you know, so he, he met his goal with that. Um, like you said, I do feel that in certain cases there is a little bit of pacing issues. Uh, so it can feel like a slow burn. Uh, however, I had fun with the film, so it didn't ultimately feel like a slow burn to me. Um, what really did it for me was the score. Even all the way down to the ending, it was just this subtle, like, Little House on the Prairie, Western-type sound, and I, I dug it. It worked for this film. Um, the other thing was that we didn't really talk about was the cinematography. Some of these shots <laughs> were just really nice, you know? Great. Just, um, I, I honestly, like, I didn't feel like I was watching a movie that took place in, like, Wyoming or you know, somewhere like on in a natural forest or something in like the Rocky Mountains. I was actually imaging the Appalachian Mountains a little bit. And, and I almost felt like I was watching something from like, um, almost like the Cherokee area, you know, up in North Carolina. So it, it really kind of felt close to home, you know, as far as that, watching that. So I dug it. Uh, I gave it a four star because I just, I, I really loved watching this film it, and there again even though it you know talking to you now it does kind of feel like a, a rip off of jaws it doesn't fully feel like a rip off of jaws it's kind of it's kind of right up there with jaws for me well, yeah it, it it's one of those things where it's like well it, it you basically take this kind of the same structure the same characters the same motivations for the characters and, and it almost seems like almost the same storyline too in a sense it's, yeah but then there's a couple little moments that make it stand out on its own and um i mean essentially basically you have jaws which is takes I mean, you know you have the water element and then mm -hmm. you have grizzly land element so you that's the the big difference between them i mean 
like I like I said earlier, you know, grizzly will make you stay out of the forest, and then jaws make you stay out of the, the ocean. So, you know, you think about it in those terms and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, well, it's it's doing it on these terms. It's doing what it's doing on. on I know that doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to word that correctly, but you basically get what I'm saying. Like it's mm-hmm. it's cutting its own, you know, path essentially. Mm-hmm. It, taking the setting here and not you know basically making another jaws which they could have easily done which other films have done you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) taken and and they have another animal a killer animal that's that is you know set in the water and stuff like that and it's been done i mean they still make shark movies today i mean Mm -hmm. you you know you're you're the shark expert you know, you're the shark movie expert, so you know, <laughs> you know what I'm getting. Oh yeah. yeah. All in all, this movie is it's it's so. It is. I, anytime you have a Christopher George in your movie, you're going to elevate it to. You know, it's not going to be under three. It's not going to be under three star because you got Christopher George. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and he's uh, like I what said, if, what I'm, if what if Chris George? Was casted as Chief Brody. It'd be interesting. Ooh, interesting. I mean, I I like Christopher George. I always have, but to me, like, and I love this is a quote from the back. So I'm reading off my blue right here. Um, there's a quote on the back that says, "Director Girdler sustains scares, prime brings depth and dimension to his character." So she makes a point. Uh, bringing out Andrew Prine's character and how he has depth and and dimension to his character, and I agree, he's honestly one of my probably my favorite character in the movie. I love his dialogue, I really mm-hmm. do. So funny, and then his his accent is so hilarious, man. He mm-hmm. just has that prototypical Southern drawl, and it's 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 so good. Mm-hmm. I, I, when I was reading that, I was like, it's really interesting that she points out him. Specifically in this this quote, so and that was from Linda Grossman, Los Angeles Times. So that I I thought that was pretty neat. It's awesome. Had to bring. It's awesome. Well, you got any more you want to talk about with this film? We covered a lot. Yeah, we did. (laughs) You ready to land it? Yeah. All right. Well, folks, you've been listening to the Midnight, well, watching, I said it again, watching the Midnight Monster Corner podcast. We hope you enjoyed our cover uh, review on Grizzly from 1976, the essential Jaws ripoff. (laughs) (laughs) But we had a blast with it. It was fun. We had a blast talking to you, talking about it in front of you guys. And uh, like I said before, if you haven't uh, checked out our Facebook group, go there and join the discussion. Uh, We will be doing a drawing here soon, so check that out, and uh, hopefully we get that episode out to you guys. Uh, But with that, Tony, you got anything else you want to add to this? All right. Well, folks, until next time, later.